Good morning and now we will start the second part of our previous course advanced PDE part 2. In part 1 of this course we have covered uh, basically distribution theory and Sobolev spaces and in part 2 we want to use the uh, Sobolev spaces and distributions to, uh, which were studied in part 1 to solve to understand uh, PDE problems especially we will restrict to linear partial differential equations uh, and namely elliptic, parabolic and hyperbolic. So, in the next uh, 20 lectures namely 40 hours we will be covering uh, these topics especially the weak formulation of elliptic PDE and then the formulation of evolution equations including uh, heat equation, wave equation and uh, and then Schrodinger equation and see some other equations if possible. So, uh, the I begin with uh, giving a brief overview of this course and then in uh, we start our lectures on this course. So, we begin by a review of this course review. especially review of Sobolev spaces not the distribution theory. S distribution theory is used to study Sobolev spaces maybe 3 lectures, 3 lectures means uh, 1 and a half hours ok that is what you will do in the first thing. After the review lectures we could not finish certain important things from the uh, Sobolev spaces especially certain inequalities which is important to study the course inequalities and we also study little more about embedding theorems. We have stated some embedding theorems and we will uh, discuss little more about embedding theorems and basically uh, embedding theorems are some review theorem. This also maybe we will take a uh, roughly 3 lectures. After that we divide this into two parts the remaining lectures are divided into two parts in part 1 of this part 2 that is what I in part 1 we study basically elliptic equations equations here you will see the existence uniqueness regularity these are the three important concepts for the well postness of the formula regularity and uh, before that basically we will also regularity all the study we study these equations in the abstract formulation abstract weak formulation. So, it is a going to study is not the classical theory it is a formulation in the weak sense abstract weak formulation and in the uh, you will also see what are called Stambachia theorem, lax milgram theorem and all that the minimization problems associated with it lax milgram Stambachia. and uh, we uh, elliptic equations probably if we have time we will uh, also study the stock system if you get it at least in the linear setup stock system and then we study some spectral problems that means eigenvalue problems. and Rayleigh equation the characterization of the eigenvalues quotient ok. And then we will see as we go along and these things we plan to cover probably around uh, 16 lectures that means around 8 hours 
not 8 hours, not 16 lectures, we may not get that much, maybe uh, 14 lectures, 14 7 hours. In the part 2, the basic uh, uh, thing elliptic equation, here we will study evolution equations. So, to study this one of the basic ingredient in addition to solar spaces etcetera, what we require what is called a semi group theory. So, we will give a brief course on semi group theory. You will see theory, you will see Hilly Yoshida, Phillips and other theorem, especially the aim is to introduce uh, come up to Hilly Yoshida. Okay. Perhaps uh, we spend around uh, 7 to 8 lectures or something, maybe less or more, you will see maybe 4 hours. And then we use the semi group theory to formulate evolution problems, evolution problems in the sense of abstract operator equations, abstract operator equations. Basically, it is our ODE in infinite dimensional spaces in infinite dimensional spaces, infinite dimensions. Something of the form d u by d t plus a u. You know that when a is a matrix, it is a finite dimensional uh, d u by d t equal to 0 or f whatever it is. Okay. So, when a is an integer or a, a is a real number or a is an uh, 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 matrix n by n matrix is nothing but your ODE system in R n. But for the PDE, eventually you convert your PDE into an evolution ODE form in infinite dimension appropriate Hilbert spaces given by the Soblow spaces here. So, we at least we try to cover the heat equation, heat equation, wave equation, equation and Schrodinger equation at least these things will be covering Schrodinger equation and if time permits uh, more about it depending and these things uh, we uh, may be try to finish it in the remaining 20 uh, remaining of the 20 lectures roughly 12 like or something like that 12 lecture to 6 hours. Okay and that is the uh, plan of this course. So, the part 1 and part 2 of the course advanced PDE course is be, uh, cover a one semester course. So, let us go to the uh, next one. Okay. So, now, now let us uh, do some uh, here also basically you will be studying using these equations uh, formulation uh, inappropriate spaces, you study existence, uniqueness, regularity and various aspects uh, associated with any PDE theory. Okay. So, let us go to review of Sobolev spaces quickly, which you have already studied review of Sobolev spaces. If not, please go through our first part of the course, Sobolev spaces. So, let us uh, uh, typically omega subset of R n. So, I am recalling this open in general need not be bounded, but most of the time we may assume boundedness, but uh, to define uh, bounded not always okay. to define you do not need boundedness, but many results uh, you may need boundedness. 
Okay. So, the spaces can be defined that way. So, the for 1 less than or equal to p, I will restrict only to the case p equal to 2. So, most of the time we will be using only p equal to 2, but the let me give the Soblo spaces. Uh, let me recall the space w 1 p of omega. In fact, you can define w m p of omega. w m p represents the growth uh, m represents the uh, number of derivatives ok m equal to 0 1 2 3 ok. So, this is less set of all f in l p of omega such that uh, you are all derivatives uh, derivative of f sorry other way let me use u only such that e is in l p of omega uh, this is for all derivatives up to order here ok. This is the distributional derivative keep that in mind distributional derivative visualized as a function. So, distribution derivatives of an l p function need not be uh, function, but you are demanding that it is a function and that belongs to L2 and you can write your norm which is a Banach space, Banach space uh, and the norm is given by norm u uh, at w 1 p and sometimes this is also written like this. So, various notations according to the convenience we will be using it ok. V is equal to you take all its derivatives take its norm at uh, L p norm basically p power and then you take 1 over p. This is mod alpha less than or equal to n ok. So, this is uh, of course, this is uh, a formula is true when p equal to uh, not true <laughs> you cannot write the power infinity L infinity is uh, uh, so when p equal to infinity use the essential. So, when p equal to infinity use supernova use essential supernova. Okay, that's all you have to here instead of that. So you have to use the essential supernova. Okay, when m equal to zero by convention, that means when m equal to zero convention, w, yeah, this is uh, m here. m here w m p ok. m p ok. So, you use that no convention w 0 p is nothing but l p and most of the time we will use the case when p equal to when p equal to 2 that is w 2 p is uh, no p equal to 2. So, the notation is here equal to 2 m 2 is denoted by h m of omega and these are Hilbert spaces Hilbert spaces. and you have your inner product uh, u v in h m in a product is nothing but integral over omega t power alpha of u t power alpha of v and you sum it over all mod alpha less than or equal to u ok. So, that is a inner product it will be doing it and uh, these are Hilbert spaces we do that one. 
Now, let me, let me make some results. So, your, as I said, it is only a review. So, I will not be proving anything. One of the important thing is you we know d omega, the space of C infinity functions with the compact support is dense in L p. So, as far as the Hilbert and Banach spaces and uh, separability, reflexivity, it is exactly follows what is true in L p. But one important results about the density which does not follow that easily then sin lp of omega but in general d omega is not dense in wmp okay but one case which you know is is uh, d of r n when the space is a full space is dense in all these results should be uh, known to you because it is repeatedly using it dense in uh, w n of r n. So, I will state few results. Uh, regarding the density later. So, the, this motivates us to define a uh, definition because d of, uh, d of omega is not dense in. So, we denote it is a new space h 1 naught of omega is the dense the completion of omega closure of d of omega in h m. In fact, you can define h m. Okay. You can do this process even for the all other L p and W m t as I said let me restrict only to h m because these are the spaces you will be using for our study. Okay. For there are I think the use of W m p in other spaces, but let me restrict uh, myself to here. Okay. This is in W m of omega. Indeed, this is also a Hilbert space, Hilbert space, and this is of course contained in H m of omega. And what we are telling is that this tells you that uh, H m naught of R n is equal to H m of R n. So, you have that is all trying to say that. So, there are so it is important to have the density results uh, because many times when you do the calculations uh, you basically has to do the calculations using uh, the smooth functions uh, and then use the uh, density argument to results uh, prove the results in general. So, there is another interesting space you see that it is h minus 1 of omega that is nothing but the dual of h m naught of omega. Okay. So, it is a dual space this dual space uh, is also important you can define uh, h minus m of omega. Okay. So, you have dual space of h 1 h m naught of omega. Okay. In particular you have h minus 1 this will be using uh, uh, we will be using a lot. So, h 1 naught of omega prime. So, with this kind of definition, so if you take uh, uh, the dual of h m, you may not uh, get uh, what we are supposed to get this structure of inclusion is happen. So, you if you have your L 2 here, L 2 of omega, this is nothing but your h 0 of omega and this contained in h 1 here is a h 1 naught of omega it is all continuous embedding. So, you will get h m naught of omega like that a continuous inclusion and this inclusion follows here. Here you have h minus 1 of these are all we have discussed it already uh, here. Okay. So, h minus 1 of omega goes like that h minus m of omega like that. 
okay. and this uh, structure uh, you get it. Okay. So, you have that inclusion. Note that these spaces are not function spaces, these are all dual spaces. Okay. So, what else you want to say? So, we have this one of the triplet which you will be using it in our analysis. Triplet, this triplet, uh, so you have your L2, this is you will be using, here you will have your H10 and then you here you will have H1, H minus 1. So, so this triplet. Uh, so, you have an interesting triplet uh, which you will see during our study L2. It works as a for any spaces you can define like that a triplet and this is interesting is H 1 naught prime. So, you have this triplet use of these triplets ok. And you also have a which be I will discuss maybe a little later. Uh, H1 naught of omega embedded in L2 in the sense of compact, okay, if omega bounded, okay, if omega bounded. So, in uh, sense uh, in the uh, what do you mean by an injection? So, this is just a uh, maybe a knot which we already discussed in detail suppose x contained in y and the injection i from x to y the identity mapping is continuous we say x is embedded in y continuously embedded in y continuously continuously and which we denote by x embedded in y. If the embedding is compact, if the embedding is compact that means the identity is compact operator embedding is compact, we say it is embedded compactly. Then we denote this notation, this is our notations which we want to use it. H1 not. In this sense, uh, in this sense, uh, you can embed this space. This is very useful. Again, we will be using that space uh, of embedding. In fact, H1 uh, smoothness, etc. In fact, we will be using this embedding in the study of uh, existence in uniqueness, which we will be doing it. And uh, uh, let me do a couple of things more before ending this lecture. And when omega equal to R n, we have a you can define you can characterize uh, characterize H m of R n via Fourier transform. How do you do? So, you have and in fact, you can define H s for any s, for any s that is advantage, for any s belongs to R, you can define H s of R n as the set, set of all tempered distributions this is the tumbled distributions. For the tumbled distributions, uh, you have the Fourier transform. So, you demand this 1 plus mod psi square whole power s by 2, you had is in L 2 of R. Okay. So, uh, note that this uh, uh, tumbled distributions tempered distributions and the is the dual of 
devel of zeta of r n zeta of r n in fact this is a special class of distribution those distributions the distributions are defined on d omega but those distributions which can be extended to the Schwarz class then not that everything can be extended okay those distributions which can be extended to a bigger space called uh, this short space the basically a rapidly decreasing functions short space and uh, the Fourier transform on short space uh, is a kind of an isomorphism when you take Fourier transform of short function it will become a short space uh, which can be used to define for every tumble distributions uh, and the Fourier transform will remain there as tumble distribution. So, demand so with this this can be uh, you can define the norm also norm u in H s of R n is nothing but the norm of it is in L 2 1 plus mod psi square s by 2 u hat is in L 2 of R. So, you may ask a question when s equal to m an integer positive integer not only a positive integer when s equal to m is a po integer both positive and negative your h s is already defined will this will be different no it will be the same thing when uh, all this requires a proof ok when s equal to m greater than or equal to 0 integer h s coincides with the earlier definition h s of r n is the same as the, pre, uh, uh, the previous definition basically. Definition. Similarly, when s equal to minus m, m greater than or equal to 0 integer. So, this gives you a direct definition of h minus 1 then uh, this become h minus m uh, h my, uh, uh, coincides with uh, r n coincides because uh, the dual of that because h m not of r n as a dual we have defined now we have the same thing is it is coincides. Of course, this is uh, the first one is not difficult to prove, but the second one requires a proof based on uh, proof by uh, Fourier transform. So, which requires a proof basically by Fourier transform of course, I am not going to do that here ok. And as I said zeta of R n is the source space which is the space of a function and it is rapidly decreasing things like that. So, uh, uh, before the second lecture uh, uh, let me do one more thing and then, then I will finish it. So, what we are going to now in the couple of uh, lectures of the review uh, to discuss few issues. So, there are four issues which we already seen in the four issues as far as for there are many issues there are four important issues as far as uh, Sobelow spaces are concerned all this we have seen it Sobelow spaces are concerned ok. So, what are the four you think one is what are called the prolongation prolongation I will uh, few things I will tell you this also called extensions extensions and then density results which I already mentioned density results and the third one as far as the boundary value problems are concerned uh, what are called boundary values. How do you interpret the boundary values? Boundary values 
these are called known as trace theorems. So, these three we will discuss in our uh, review. In the fourth one is about embedding results, I will as I said I will uh, little more I will elaborate on that embedding results we will discuss it together together with uh, some of the important inequalities like inequalities like uh, Poincare, Poincare, Wattinger how much we do not know let us see Poincare, Poincare, Wattinger may be if you get the time cones inequality is important study the uh, elasticity system inequality. So, this part uh, after the review article in the as these things will be discussed little more details about that one. So, we will finish this uh, first lecture and then we will continue about the review uh, about all these issues uh, prolongations densities so just to recall. So, so, if you want to study and if you want to write your examinations is better that uh, you review these things uh, thoroughly including the proofs which I will not be giving. Thank you.